Good morning, heritage friends. All right, so here we go. Our topic for today is wisdom. What is wisdom? A simple definition of the word, wisdom is having discernment, an ability to judge rightly and to follow the soundest course of action based upon knowledge, experience, and understanding. Often the words knowledge and wisdom are used interchangeably, but there really is a great difference between the two. Knowledge is the accumulation of facts and data. You can accumulate knowledge from reading a book or doing a good Google search. And I mean good, not the ones that take you down like weird rabbit holes. Um, you can, so you can acquire knowledge, right? Um, but wisdom, wisdom is more than just knowledge. It is a characteristic born of knowledge, experience, and understanding. You can't research wisdom. You can't buy it. You can't pass it along to someone else because it partially comes from our own experience. You gain wisdom by making choices, putting plans into action, making mistakes, and then learning from them. It's something we accumulate not only from the passage of time, but in using that time wisely in search of constant learning and growth. In some ways, wisdom is a mindset. It is an orientation towards expansion and embracing the unknown. Wisdom is built upon taking risks and living to tell the tale. But humankind, we often seek wisdom or like a shortcut to wisdom in, in a sense. Sometimes we seek to learn from another's example. We often ask people their advice and we read books by people who seem to understand more of this world than we do. Authors like Deepak Chopra, Neckhart Tolle, and Robin Sharma have published numerous books about wisdom and have made millions of dollars on this subject. We crave it. It's like we secretly, but somehow collectively, wish that we could understand how the world works and how it is to be human. I know that from a young age, I have wished to put, I could put my hands on a book that would just tell me the keys to figuring out how I'm supposed to live my life. Now, you might be wondering, Joy, you're a minister. Isn't the Bible a wisdom book? Isn't that the book that should really just answer all of your questions, right? Isn't that why you're a minister? <laughs> um, and it's true, you can find a list of laws to follow within these pages. Uh, think like the Ten Commandments, for example. So there are 10 rules to follow on how to live your life. And many of Jesus' teachings are guidelines on how to be a good follower. For instance, what did Jesus say was the greatest commandment? that you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all your strength and all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. An important guideline to be sure, but what is it that I and many of us are looking for? It seems to be something else, something elusive and out of reach. And we come back again to that idea of knowledge versus wisdom. Wisdom cannot be taught or absorbed through a book. It can only be learned through experience. So the Bible, as amazing as it is, it is a source of knowledge, of data and stories, but not of wisdom. Wisdom is something that we must discover for ourselves. And the Bible agrees with me on this point. Look to our first scripture reading from today in Proverbs chapter 8. It is written as if wisdom is speaking to us in the first person. And she says, I was formed at the very beginning when the world came to be. I was there when God set the heavens in place. I was constantly at God's side. In the Bible, wisdom is described as being female and a counterpart to God. She was there alive and present before God started creating the universe. You could say that wisdom is the female face of God or that wisdom, in, wisdom encompasses what we call the divine feminine. In Hebrew, wisdom is known as hokmah and in Greek, wisdom is called Sophia. I think talking about wisdom is important as it names and places the divine feminine where she should be, right beside God. One who had as much influence and delight as God themselves as they created the world. Often Christianity has placed too much emphasis on the masculine nature of God. Um, you know, we call God he often, and Jesus was male, so it seems like often there wasn't much place for the divine feminine. But here in our Hebrew scriptures, which predate Jesus's time on earth, 
Here we see that wisdom is important and that she was there from the very beginning. The Bible may have been written by men and thus been skewed towards a masculine perspective, but we cannot debate that wisdom or the divine feminine exists. She's here in print and not just once, but numerous times in the Bible. Our Christian heritage includes the feminine face of God. So let's celebrate wisdom and let's do so by learning more about her. In Proverbs chapter one, which we didn't read today, but I encourage you to do so yourselves. Um, it talks about wisdom standing in a public square on the top of a wall so she can be seen. And she cries out, how long will you who are simple love your simple ways? And she goes on to say that no one pays her any attention. No one responds when she reaches out her hand to us or when she offers us advice. And that's true of human nature, isn't it? We learn best from doing, and more often we learn from our mistakes. There's a famous story by Portia Nelson that exemplifies this, and here's how it goes. I walk down a street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I fall in. I'm lost. I'm helpless. Oh, it isn't my fault. It takes forever to find a way out. I walk down the same street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I pretend I don't see it and I fall in again. I can't believe that I'm in the same place, but it isn't my fault. Still, it takes me a long time to get out. I walk down the same street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see it there and I still fall in because it's a habit. My eyes are open. I know where I am. This is my fault and I get out immediately. I walk down the same street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I walk around it. And lastly, I walk down another street. This is what wisdom looks like. A growing awareness, a building of understanding, a learning from experiences, a change in perception and thinking. It's usually not something that happens quickly. It's a process. It's not a destination, but it's a journey. And that's why it's so important to be kind to yourself as you grow into wisdom. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to fall down. This is an essential part of being human. But as we grow and stumble, it's good to follow the advice of poet Maya Angelou. Do the best you can until you know better. And then when you know better, do better. So let's say that this sermon has helped us to reorient ourselves concerning wisdom. Perhaps we're ready to seek wisdom for wisdom's sake. Well, now what? If we keep reading the Bible, it says that wisdom is the quote, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom and to shun evil is understanding. It also says whoever listens to wisdom will live in safety and be at ease without fear of harm. Okay, so this is a sticking point for me. Over and over again, it says that wisdom is fearing God. Now, I don't associate fear with anything good. And fear from a psychological viewpoint causes our brains to freeze. And we can't learn and we can't love when we're stuck in a state of fear. So what does the Bible say over and over? Like, why does the Bible say over and over that we should fear the Lord? I looked up the origins of the word fear to see if the root word might give us some clues, but alas, fear just means fear, which means to be terrified. So there's really, there's no help there. But then it, the resource I was looking at, it listed words associated with fear, and one of them was reverence. When we revere something, we stand in awe of it, and we can fear it, but it also can mean to respect or honor something. So maybe we're on the right track here. Respect and honor are words that have a more positive meaning. And looking further into the word reverence, we see that reverence also implies a certain amount of love or affection. So what if we swapped the word fear for reverence? Then we will get the reverence of the Lord, that is wisdom. To love God, to acknowledge God's power as our creator and sustainer, to honor God as a daily practice, that 
is wisdom. And why is that? Because when we remember that God is the I am and the source and the very reason of our existence, then we're reminded of our place in the universe. Each one of us is a jewel woven into the web of life. We are each beautiful and unique jewels, but we are not the whole picture. Cultivating an awareness and appreciation for God helps us to practice humility, not to get too hung up on ourselves or on our busy lives. We remember that we are because God is, and that helps to slow everything down and to ground us in our true purpose. We are children of God. Our lives are meant to reflect God's love and light to others. That's it. At the end of the day, what we will be remembered for is how we demonstrated love for others. It comes back to Jesus's greatest commandment, to love God with our whole being and to love others as ourselves. When we started this reflection, we were thinking about how wisdom is born from knowledge, experience, and understanding. In other words, wisdom comes from living our lives with as much grace, curiosity, compassion, kindness, and a willing to learn as we willingness to learn as we can muster. But more than that, from a Christian perspective, wisdom comes from cultivating reverence for God. Reverence is built upon relationship as it grows from respect and love. So build your relationship with God. Create little practices throughout the day where you stop and check in with God's presence. Create a home for God within your heart. And build a relationship with wisdom, with Sophia, with the divine feminine. Invite her in for tea. Tell her your deepest secrets. And what shall we gain? In her words, whomever listens to wisdom will live in safety and be at ease without fear of harm. May it be so. May we all beings seek wisdom. May all beings live with safety and ease. May it be so. Amen.